So right now, walking through the Pontiac Nationals in Norwalk, Ohio at the Summit Motorsports Raceway. It's pretty cool. Lots of people. Lots of Pontiacs. And yeah, you can take a ride with me. Go exploring around everything that we're doing here today. I was actually just talking about one of these on my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's this Super Duty Formula Firebird. These cars, being a Firebird, still have a shaker. They're pretty rare. One of... This is one of how many? One of 43-ish. Yep. It's weird that it has a vinyl top, though, being a... <laughs> There's a 69 Trans Am. Now, Firebirds were introduced in 1967. Trans Ams, 1969. You can see the heat extractor vents there on the fender, and they all came with this white and blue two-tone paint job. These are all super rare and about a quarter of a million dollars. So this is the first year of the Trans Am, 69. And here's a 75, so this is what I'm building. Again, you can tell pretty easily because of the grills how shallow compared to the 75 when they swapped the back windows. It's got two-tone red and white. Ours is having two-tone blue and white. Cool car. I like these wheels. These are like the year one wheels compared to these ones which are the factory original honeycombs. You can tell the difference. So this is the, this is the four-speed one. So I could be lying, but I'm pretty sure the last number that I heard was there are only four four speeds left so you get an idea of just how rare these cars really are oh this one's the blue's different different it is darker isn't it? it's like a greenish almost it's like a dark dark teal why don't we build a 69 tribute trans <laughs> we're not getting a real one say my wife would probably be in with you on that that's her favorite year so last time i was here they were selling one that was beat up a little bit 160 thousand is what he wanted for what do you, Trans Am? Yeah, quarter of a million. I yeah, I bet it. Yeah, I bet it is probably quarter of a million. Quarter of a million car. Like other car manufacturers, Pontiac had its own little short run special edition type vehicles. The Firehawk is based off of either a Trans Am or a Firebird, and it had some different styling, a little bit more power, and of course, it was a lot more rare. Early Pontiac, some of them had 326, which is another Pontiac engine that a lot of people don't really realize. Well, there's a 421 right there, 421 tri power. That setup, and that's the same engine that we saw just sitting on it over there on the on the stand. This engine is big, big money. Um, it was the Super Duty, so it's a 421 Super Duty. I've been going to these car shows since I was probably seven years old, and this is my 11-year-old son first time at a big car show like this. So I was pointing out cars that are unique or interesting, but there's just so much to look at at an event like this that it was just pointing too much to fit into a video. To me at least. I don't know all of them. We have a 74 Trans Am. Inside it, we've got the Firebird. So you can see the differences. We talk about the differences occasionally. You can see the differences between the formula, which is the dual snorkel hood, and the Trans Am with the shaker hood. There's GT. I definitely GX. point out the G8 uh, GXP because it's one of the fastest Pontiacs ever produced. Supercharged LS motors. Ah, beautiful. In a minute, I explain why you see GMCs here. It's actually a pretty fascinating fact. Look at this. This is still pretty cool. Also, check out this Formula Sunbird. These are pretty rare, and this car was actually called out as a People's Choice Award winner. That GTA right there, the black one, is one of the fastest ones they ever made. It had a Grand National motor in it. Gran Turismo Omlagato, or GTO for short, it's inarguable 
that this is one of the most iconic cars in the American muscle car history. And arguably, it's the first muscle car ever yes, produced. What inspired a lot of what came after this. On the right hand side is a 74 Super Duty Trans Am. This is, um, this actually beat the Lamborghini Kutak back in the same year. By quarter mile time, by zero to 60 time, this was the fastest production car in 1974. There at GMC in a Pontiac show. GMCs back in the early 60s had Pontiac motors in them. And then later on, of course, GMC and Chevy became really closely related. But early on, GMC and Pontiac were really closely related. That's why you'll see a GMC at a Pontiac show. They're allowed in. Six Trans Am. So the difference between 74, 75, and 76. 74 has the marker lights down low like the 76 do. 75, they move them up to the grill. 76, you see the honeycomb pattern is really prominent on the silver here. You can actually really tell the difference. And you also see that the bumper is a solid, like a, an enduro style rubber, rubber bumper basically. But the wheels that are on this car never came on these years of car. They didn't start that wheel style until 78. Hold on, let me clarify. The snowflake wheel came out 77, but the eight inch snowflake, which have the deeper concave look, came out in 78, which is what this is modeled after. Also, another interesting little tidbit of information, Smoking the Bandit, which had the seven inch snowflakes, was actually a 76 Trans Am with a 77 nose on it because they weren't released yet. Completely custom car, but it's still really cool looking. Even growing up when I was a kid, the green um, was one of my favorites. That and Chesterfield Brown, which um, was one of my favorite colors just because it was weird. Like not a lot of people really liked it. And I was always weird and I liked the like the, these greens and, and browns. Flat black. Flat black. I believe it's a 78 train name. I can't tell unless I look at the green. 77 or 78. And you can tell the difference between um, 70 to 73 because of the taillights. So um, on our car, it has the 74 to 78 style taillights, but this is what they look like from 70 to 73. So you can tell distinctly from the rear end as well. Uh, Formula Firebird and it's a 73 Formula 400 which you can tell again 70 73 because of the tail lights and a formula because of the dual snorkel hood so Here's a good comparison between some of the Pontiac earlier Pontiac wheels that you could find so right there You have some rally ones and over here on this red one you see rally twos and then you see the honeycomb style wheel right here and uh, depending on what they were um, they, you could get these on pretty much any car. So these are the different taillights. So these were from 79 to 81, and that's what the taillights look like. And that is when they switched over to third gen, so from 82 up to 92. Now, Fieros are kind of one of those cars that you either love them or absolutely hate them. And I don't know where I fit in that, but this one was Royal super Bobcat. cool. Hot. Hot. Bobby. Bobby. Spine Tingler. Butler Performance. You need to give me a new Butler shirt. Butler is kind of the Pontiac people. We built some pretty high horsepower, uh, reliable, if nothing else, engines, as you can see right here on the stand. 726 horsepower. Dog. I bet it's slow. <laughs> Not really. Ah, Bobby! I definitely can't be the only one that really digs wagons. I've always kind of gravitated to the sleepers, the weird colors, and all that stuff. And this is just a really cool, tasteful design for one. And this right here, this is called Admiralty Blue. 
this is the color that my car is supposed to be. This is probably my favorite car here. It's a 69 Grand Prix. This is the whole setup. I'm just, it's a driver, but these things are so cool. This car ran a 12.2 at 122 miles an hour, according to that flag down there. For a big car, I mean, that's, that's moving. Oh, and nitrous, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Things sweet. Something fired up, it sounds really good over here. This is a definite to each their own kind of styling. It's not my thing, but I cannot argue the attention to detail. I cannot argue that this car sounds incredible and that it's well taken care of. Of course, it's got a butler motor, so oh, man, that's a thing of beauty. I'm not even a person who likes chrome. I'm not that flashy. Before you say, oh, he's just raising the Grand Prix. Yeah, it's a supercharged 3800. It's not just a normal Grand Prix. They produce like 260 horsepower from the factory. And if they're tuned right, can make good power and run really well. That GMC ran a 14.2. Hold the wagon. Oh, that thing's cool, man. I see, I see the piping, yeah. What's in it? Oh, all right. I see the intercooler piping. Hold on a second. Did you notice anything weird here? Let's take it back a little bit and look at the car that he's racing. Hold the wagon? Oh, that thing's cool, man. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but this is what you would call a fast car. Factory appearing stock tire drag car. So they look stock, even down to the engine when you open the hoods, and they run on a factory style tire, but man, they're meant to show people, hey, I'm fast too, and I bet you didn't expect it. And it beat this Turbo LS wagon. Oh, I get That's what Uncle Chris 
says, but it's silver. That's his silver car right there. That's a, that's a Not, no, that's a GTO over there. I love drag racing, but I've never been a big drag car fan, to be honest with you. I like cars that appear stock, or close to stock, or lightly modified, but run really, really well. The sleeper idea to me is just one of the coolest things in the automotive industry. So when I see these fast cars, you know, the super stock cars, the cars that look original, but are running like in the 11s, it makes me want to build one. <laughs> so. Ah, <sighs> you may see that. Getting ready to pull out of the Pontiac Nationals and I see my other favorite car. Ah, 240SX. <sighs> Been a long day. Getting ready to leave. Driving through the field. Oh, so it's three hours to home. And I think that'll wrap up the Nationals. Yep, free car. <laughs> you got a free car. Anyway, catch you when we get home. My son and I made it back. He had a good time. I had a good time. My parents had a good time. My aunt and uncle had a good time. They spent the whole weekend there. Uh, me, I could only go up for one day. But it was totally worth it. And I think any time that you can get a chance to go to a large event like that, even if you're not like 100% into cars, just go check it out because they have so much other stuff going on. And you know, a lot of times you get these subcultures of people that just get together and it's just fascinating to watch and observe and just to appreciate the work that goes into a lot of these vehicles. I came back with even more motivation to get the Trans Am done and some ideas that you know I didn't have before. I hope you enjoyed the quick overview of the 2023 Pontiac Nationals. Now, I had to cut a lot of stuff out, but I think you get the gist of the experience of going to something like a national car show. So, I'll see you in the next video.